If you allow me to continue in English, first of all, I apologize for not standing. I have a bad knee and I would not be able to stand on my two knees for too long. I'm scheduled for an MRI next week, but that's too long of a story. First of all, it's good to be back in Holland. I've been here many times before, but particularly this occasion. And I would like to utilize the limited amount of time we have tonight for as much interaction, because I'm sure you have a lot of questions. There's a lot to talk about, but I'll try to at least start in a brief um, initial introduction uh, to the core issues, and perhaps we can take it from there in, in the Q&A uh, process. History will judge those of us at this time, whether Iranians or foreigners, not only by what we do, but I think also by what we do not do. Um, these are very serious times. I think a lot of what is ahead in the next decades, if not the next century, may be defined in the next few months, depending on what we choose to do or not to do. As Iranians, I think the agenda is quite clear. We are struggling for freedom, for self-determination, for sovereignty, for justice, for liberty, for equality, for human rights. And of course, I think it behooves the question, can any of such ideals be ever accomplished or attained under the current regime? A lot of Iranians have tried with the exercise of Eslahat, or if you will, uh, an attempt to uh, reform the system. Time and again, they tried and they failed. Not because they didn't believe it, but because the regime would not allow it. There were some of us from the very beginning who believed in a secular parliamentary democracy as an alternative to this theocracy. And maybe 30 years had to go by for all the price we had to pay to appreciate the values of freedom, of liberty, of pluralism, of respect for another person's opinions and tolerance. Perhaps this generation understands better than the previous one how important it is to fight not just for your rights, but your opponent's rights. I often said to my strongest detractor, if I don't fight for your right to oppose me for everything I stand for, I won't be able to rely on your turn to defend me for my rights to have my opinions one day. And this is what it's all about at the end of the day. There is today a common agenda that unites all those who fight for these values. Of course we differ in ideology, and that's fine. But there is a commonality of interest. There are shared values that help us all find a common denominator and a common project. Today, Iran has a serious problem. We have a national project that we have to consider. I'm not the kind of person who likes to sit in endless philosophical debates on the merits of one system versus the other. I think that the only way to be certain of what and how you can measure the ultimate will of the people is through the election uh, process. That at the end, it's about the ballot box and at the end, it's about the right to conduct free elections. What's the point of arguing if we simply cannot have the right to conduct in our own country today free and fair elections? How can we measure what people want without giving them a chance to cast their votes? What unites today people from the left and from the right, what unites today monarchists and republicans, is the very fact that we have a regime which refuses to recognize the right for Iranians to vote their conscience. And until we don't have that means available to us, we can't move forward. My campaign at this stage is only one, to fight for our rights to conduct free elections in our country. I asked the international community not to help us bringing about regime change, 
That's our decision and ours alone. But I ask them to support us in our right to conduct free elections in Iran. And then there's two possibilities. Either this regime concedes and grants us that opportunity, which they won't, in which case we have no other recourse but to fight this regime, so we can then have this opportunity. The means, however, may differ. I've been an advocate of civil disobedience and nonviolence. But I would also add, like to add in this component that we're not just talking about a change of regime. The way we go about it has to include a process of national reconciliation and amnesty, without which the cost of change will be much higher to our society. What stands ahead are the people stuck in this regime who want out. They need their exit strategy. I'm talking about the coercive forces of this regime that need to have a guarantee of survival beyond this regime. I can't be the only carrier of this message. Our society has to be willing to forgive and move on. Not to forget, but to forgive. I use the example of South Africa, the importance of truth and reconciliation. For anything that happened under this regime and maybe the previous one, we have to be able to bring closure and move on. We have to have the audacity to stand and fight for everybody's right in this reconciliation, to move on, to put an end to the cycle of violence, to stand for the abolition of capital penalty, to move in a society which can rebuild on the basis of reconciliation and not uh, re you know, reciprocating in, in vengeance, because it can only uh, you know, uh, delay the cause of, of true freedom. The world has a choice today. They have a choice of opting for a scenario until now never implemented. And that's my biggest reproach to the Western world in particular, especially the democracy of this world. The argument has been between diplomacy and military options. Failed diplomacy and the contemplation of possible military strikes on my country. It's not the first time I've said to them, wait a second, have you forgotten something here? What about the Iranian people? For 33 years, the only dialogue that has existed with Iran by the outside world has been with the regime and its representatives. Don't you think it's about time that you establish a line of direct dialogue with the democratic opposition? which represents the majority of the Iranian people who are outside of this regime to begin with, whether they are ethnic groups, religious minorities, women who are second-class citizens, that's half of our country's population, when are you going to have the ability to say, sure, we're not asking you to stop your dialogue with the regime, or what about the democratic forces? How many times have I heard people in the outside world saying, well, we don't see the Iranian people moving. I said, how many times do you expect people to go and sacrifice their lives totally unarmed on the streets? How many Sohrabs and Medals have to sacrifice themselves before you get the message? Oh, we're afraid that we're going to interfere in the country's internal affairs. I said, listen, Iranians were brandishing slogans on the streets in plain view, in English and French. Trust me, they were not practicing their linguistic skills. They were sending you a clear message. When the people were chanting, Obama, Obama, either you're with us or with them, that was a request for intervening and taking sides. And an opportunity was lost in 2009, after the fiasco and the fraud in the elections. People said, well, you know, the green movement is dead, the leaders are imprisoned, blah, 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 status quo, okay, it's a reality, so what if you don't become so clear, and so on and so forth. And to that I say, okay, I have a lot to talk about, but I don't want to take your time on this, because we will be moving on a tangent. All I'm saying is that there is still a chance to bring about change that will be win-win for the Iranian people and for the free world and not to the regime. Any scenarios outside of helping the Iranian people will be lose-lose and only to the interest of the regime. Now think about this, whether you are Iranians or foreigners. This opportunity is not going to be around for long. We're talking a few short months. The existential threat to the state of Israel, if the status quo continues to prevail, may in fact be a key reason 
for getting the whole region into a turmoil that will be unreturnable from. Once we pass that threshold, there's no going back. Once proliferation is a reality, there is no going back. And God help us all if the whole region goes nuclear. And I think Iran is the country that can change that. Iran is the country at which we can stop this proliferation and reverse it. But why could Iran be key? A lot of you have heard the argument by the regime. It is our right to enrich. It is our right to pursue technology. And even some who argued before the regime did, after all, why not a nuclear Iran, militarily speaking, as if it was lip service to some nationalistic pride for any Iran. I, I guarantee you, right now, if you conduct a poll in Iran, a lot of people may say, sure, as a matter of principle, it is Iran's sovereign right. But if you ask the majority of the Iranian people, do they trust their own regime with nuclear weapons or technology? The majority will say, absolutely not. And if our country tomorrow is attacked, it will just destroy our chances to for democracy, and for that matter, for unified Iran. So much damage has been done by this regime that even if we don't have this problem from an international perspective, I don't know which Iran would be left for those of us fighting for it. This is getting far more serious than easy. There's a lot more that I can say, but again, the time is short, and I cannot really say much more. I'm sure there are a lot of questions. Maybe through the questions, some more can be said. I'd like to, uh, in closure to my opening statement, simply say that I believe that there's still an opportunity to offer a scenario that is far less legitimate and far less costly than the extreme scenario of conflict. I can't guarantee whether or not we will succeed. But all I can say is that it will be historically criminal not to give the Iranian people a chance before we resort to other options. We deserve our day in court after 33 years. And I'm asking the free world to help us in this cause. Give the Iranian people a chance. Back them up for a change. Give them wants the support that they deserve. And then you'll see how quickly we can bring change about in our own country. Thank you very much.